gets hungry for dinner at eight. She likes the theater, but don't come late. She'd never bother with anyone she'd hate. That's why this chick, she's a tramp. She don't like crap games with parents and earls. Won't go to Harlem dressed in ermine and pars. She will not dish the dirt with the rest of those girls. That is why this chick, she is a tramp. She likes that free, that cool wind in her hair. Her life's without care. She's broke, but it's hope. Hates California. It's just cold and it's damp. That's why this lady, she's a tramp. Left it up, John. She gets far too hungry, babe. Wait for dinner at eight. She adores the theater. I haven't ever steps in late. She never bother, baby, with some bum she'd hate. That is why this lady, she's a champ. She don't like crap games. With those parents and earls Never makes a trip to Harlem Dressed up in a whole lot of pearls She will not dish the dirt With the rest of those girls That is why this lady, she's a tramp She likes that free, that cool Crazy wind in her hair Babe, her life's without care She's broke, but it's so Hate California It's just cold and it's damp That's why the lady That is why the lady That's why the lady is a trap Thank you, thank you so much Genuine applause in there as well. <laughs> Good afternoon, Frank Holden. Hello, how are you? I'm absolutely fantastic. Uh, that is, uh, I'll give the full introduction. That was the very authentic sound of uh, Frank Holden, and uh, you do uh, a, a very, very authentic uh, Frank Sinatra tribute. Don't I you? certainly do, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been talking about that off air about uh, about perfecting the accent. I'm going to take you right back to the start, though, Frank, because yeah. Um, there may, there, I don't know your story, I'm going to ask you your story, mm -hmm. there may have been a point where you, you said to yourself, yeah, I, I want to sing like Frank Sinatra, but there must have been a point before that you thought, well, I can actually sing. Take us back to that point. Well, the first time, <clears throat> um, I've told the story many times, but the story's exactly the same. So uh -huh. the very first time my mother and father had a uh, a radiogram, and, and the people listening, the radio, it was called a Grundig, yeah. which was a German uh, radio, radiogram, and in it, you could play the radio, and you could play 45 re records, and you could play CD, uh, no CD, you could play uh, 78s and things. And I thought, wow, and it was stereo. Yeah. And in the living room, it was a piece of furniture. Uh-huh. With stuff on it. <laughs> Flutter and stuff. And you opened it up, and God, I don't know, everything in there. And the very, very first song I ever heard was exactly the song you've played. Uh-huh. Uh, it's kind of Rogers and Hart's song, which was, was uh, The Ladies of Tramp. That's the first song I ever heard. I was probably... 11 maybe, I'm, I'm getting my 11, 12, and I thought, wow, what is that? Because the music, the trumpets, the trombones, the, the, the whole thing was <coughs> just <sighs> magic. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't really quite understand it. But I think at that point I thought, I'm going to do that. You know, a kid, you know, yeah. I'm going to do that. And then as I grew up, uh, you know, 11, 12, 13, well, my friends were listening to the Beatles, and I listened to the Beatles. Well, I listened to the Beatles and heavy rock and heavy music and the Rolling Stones. I was listening to Frank Sinatra. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of where it started. Uh -huh. And I probably was probably about, well, I'm thinking 15, 14, 15, 16. And I kind of decided, you know, when I grow up, uh, this is what I'm going to do. 
So the first opportunity I took, I think, was about 19, and I went to see Frank Sinatra live in London mm -hmm. uh, in a place called the Royal Festival Hall. I had a little Ford Escort, and it was 1100 engine, but we managed to drive way halfway down because the, <laughs> the car got tired <laughs> and we got the train. I think the car was struggling to you know, get to London. So we, we kind of parked the car in Hull uh, or somewhere, and we got the train down. And we stayed there for, I think, maybe two, three days, uh, and the second day was a concert. Yeah. I just sat in the audience, um, and the guy says, ladies and gentlemen, from here it's Frank Sinatra. And the guy walks out, Frank Sinatra, and I went, okay. Everybody was screaming, and I was just over the pit. I just sat back and watched, uh -huh. and looked, and listened, and took it in. One, one of the few people who've, who've seen Frank Sinatra, I mean. Well, unfortunately, I've seen him three times live. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was, I, was probably, I was probably 18, maybe, maybe 18, 19, something, something in there. <clears throat> um, and... The interesting thing is, when I was younger, 11, 12, I thought, I'm going to do that. And then you're 60, I'm going to do that. And I was 19, 18, 19. And I thought, I'm still going to do that. <laughs> it never changed. Yeah. The difference was I was seeing the guy working yeah. live. That was the big difference. And what I, the interesting thing for me is, what I thought he was doing is exactly what he was doing. And how cool he think that he might have been. That's how cool he actually was. Yeah. And I thought, okay, so what you do is you become relaxed. If you can become relaxed, everything flows. Because that's what he did. And at the end of it, I just thought, what is it? I was doing research at that point. I mean, if you can imagine 19 or 20 years of age standing up singing my way, that's, that's never going to fly. Yeah. That's <laughs> not going to fly. <clears throat> so I'd done a lot of research for a lot of years, and I listened to him, and I looked at the movies. I wasn't a big movie fan, but certainly the, mu the, the music. And... Um, I was able to work out exactly what he's doing to, to, to the nth degree. And I use a lot of skills to, to s recreate that. Um, and people warm to it because they know that, it, that I mean, I'm no Frank Sinatra, but, but they, they, they warm to the fact that my heart's in it. Yeah. And really, if your heart's knowing something, leave it. So the inspiration has been there right from the very, absolutely, right yeah. from the very outset. Absolutely. You yeah. know, after after listening to old records, and mm -hmm. I've got to, I've got to say, and I've said it uh, publicly quite a lot. You know, your your uh, my taste of music was developed from my granddad's record collection. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And my mum was a big Tom Jones fan, so mm -hmm. hence you know the, the the Tom Jones thing that I do. And uh, so that inspiration has been there, and then you've clearly worked very hard on it, Frank. You, yeah. You've you've put a lot of work into it. I mean, for example, the accent. I mean, you you can hear the the uh, the American accent in yeah. that song that we just played. Yeah. And did you find that hard to 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 develop, or or did it just develop naturally? To be honest, I didn't find it hard at all because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Just to go back for a minute, you mentioned Tom Jones there. Yes. We went to see Tom Jones uh, a year ago, maybe less than a year ago, and the guy's absolutely outstanding because he does this thing that Sinatra does. His heart's his heart's on the, on his t on the table. Yeah. <laughs> and he's absolutely. It's like this thing with Sinatra. What you think Tom Jones does when you go and see him? That's exactly what he does. It's not a disappointment. Yeah. That's exactly what he does. Mm -hmm. um, but no, the accent. No, I never had a problem with the accent ever, uh, for the simple reason I worked out with the accent in my head, what it was. And then when I first started to do this, there was somebody um, I'll not mention who it was said, um, "Well, if I was singing Sinatra songs, I would never use an accent." And I says, well, the reason you would never use an accent is because you can't do it. <laughs> That's what, that was the answer. That's a fair point. Um, there's, a line that, there's a line that has to be drawn is, is that if you imagine any, any vocalist, any vocalist worth the salt, and this, this is the only thing that Sinatra did. Sinatra only told a story. That's it. You know, people looking for this deep meaning. There isn't a deep meaning. That's it. He told the story. And he used his, his heart and he used his emotions and he used his experience. And, and that's what a really good vocalist should do. Mm -hmm. So you can be a singer who people will say, that's not a great singer, you know, vocally. But if your heart's in it, then you're a great singer because you're in. I've, I've actually been telling people, Frank, uh, that, and I've no doubt you watched it. There was yeah. a, a documentary on, about, uh, on BBC just a few weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, about Sinatra. And uh, it was all it was all leading up to the I think it was the thirteen songs that he did in his first farewell concert. Yeah. And uh, he hadn't told anybody that he, he had told them the arrangements, but he hadn't told them exactly what he, he wanted to do. And he, yeah. and he told a story 
of his life all the way through, through that, the story, yeah. that concert. And nobody, nobody knew that he was planning to do it, mm -hmm. and nobody knew that he was planning to retire. Uh, but it was clear through through that that so you know the element of storytelling uh, was was really really prevalent. Well, I, I, I mean, without criticising anybody, but just just in a positive point, I watch people on the television, I listen to people on the radio, and even big stars, and I think, no, nah, sorry, don't believe you. Don't believe you. You don't convince me because their hearts know in it. Mm -hmm. And this is the this is the whole concept. Anybody wants to sing a song, get your story. For example, we just sung there, Rogers and Hart's song, Ladies of Tramp. It's a story. She gets matched, you know. It's a story about, you know, she does this and she does that. That's why she's a tramp. But he loves her. Mm -hmm. And she loves him and they love the world. And that's, and that's a, it's a story. And another song, uh, it could be my best, another story. And I've got the world on a string is another story. It's, if, if you can work out what the story is, and if there's ever a secret, this is a secret, work out what the story is behind the song. Um, work it out in your head. Sing your song with that passion. Everybody on the planet Earth will believe you. But if you sing your song with a big smell, da, 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 nobody believes you because you don't believe it. Mm -hmm. You have to believe it. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. You did mention I've got a world on a string. Yeah. Yeah, tell us a bit about this. We're going to play this in a second. The world on a string is, a, is, is, is one of my favourite songs and it's a song that I really like to, to, to open a show with. If we're playing with a big band, um, or a, even a piano, a back, not so much a piano, but a backing track system or, or a small band, this is an absolute stonker of a song. It's it's like somebody saying here, like ding ding, here's the bell. <coughs> and this is a song that Sinatra used um, many, 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 many times in his career. Um, particularly one of the ones that stands out is the is the concert for the Americas, um, where you have the whole orchestra, and he comes out and the, and the band goes da 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 da, -da and you'll hear it here. And this is my take on it. Mm -hmm. It's an absolutely beautiful piece of music. The orchestration is great. It's banging away, and it's another story. Here we go. I've got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Got that string around my finger What a world, what a life I'm in love song that I sing I can make the rain go anytime I move my finger lucky me well can't you see I'm in love life's a wonderful thing as long as I hold that string I'd be a sunny soul in soul if I should ever let it go I got the world on a string, sitting on a rainbow, got that string around my finger. What a world, what a life, I am in love. Life is a beautiful thing, long as I hold that string. I'd be a silly soul in soul If I should ever let it go I got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Got that string around my finger What a world Song so much, I think we should do it again. Here's a truly beautiful love song. When somebody loves you, it's no good unless he loves you. Oh. Happy to be near you when you need someone to cheer you all the way. Taller than the tall 
tall this tree That's how it's got to feel Deeper than the deep blue sea That's how deep it goes if it's real And when somebody needs you It's no good unless he needs you All the way Through the good and lean years And for all those in between years Come what may Who knows where the road will lead us Only a fool would dare say But if you let me love you It's for sure I'm gonna love you All the way All the way And if you let me love you It's for sure I'm gonna love you All the way All the way Thank you. If you, I like that song. That's a pretty song. If you have just tuned in, you are not listening to Frank Sinatra. That was Frank Holden. Uh, brilliant stuff, Frank. Thank you. Uh, Thank replicating you. The, the man himself mm. and then uh, doing that. Now, we, we've been talking off here, and uh, for the benefit of listeners, we've been talking about all the hard work that goes into uh, to producing a high-level tribute. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, you know... Tributes are, we've got to be honest, Frank, uh, and we will be putting a picture up on uh, Facebook. You, you don't look like Frank Sinatra, but your, your tribute, a good tribute should invoke the image in people's minds through yep. the music, through the, through the movement. So tell, tell us a bit about the, the, the mechanics of what you do. The mechanics of what I do is, is, is uh, first of all, I do a lot of homework. Uh, a tremendous amount of research, uh, a lot of listening, a lot of looking. And I'm quite fortunate I've seen Sinatra three times live. So when I say I've done a lot of research and a lot of looking, a lot of listening, I probably do a lot less than I would, than I would need to do because I have the memory of actually seeing you know, Frank Sinatra working live. Yeah. I know what he does. I know how he does it. And I've been able to work out how he does it. That's why I'm able to replicate it. Yeah. Because there's a concept, and people can look, look this up in Google or whatever they want to do. There's a concept uh, which is called mirroring. And I've used this since I was 15 years of age. To me, it's like having a glass of water. I don't have to learn it. It's just, it's an intuitive thing. I'm, I'm incredibly intuitive. Um, I can get into the city centre of any country in the world and find a parking place, which, which is only one left. That's what happens for me. That's how it works for me. <laughs> uh, any time, any place. Quite handy to take with you then. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, if, if you can find out, if, if you can find out what somebody, somebody uh, is doing the strategies, how they do things. For example, um, Frank Sinatra was saying to you, what a hell of a life I've had here, singing all the way or whatever, right? If you can understand the emotion behind that and you can understand why singing it, the way he's singing it, and you can get to grips with the story, again, the story, you have to get the story, because any good vocalist, that's all you do, you're telling a story. Yeah. Um, most people don't go to this level that I've went to, to be honest. I'm quite sure that Frank Sinatra would not even have gone to this level because he didn't work it out. He just did it, <laughs> that's because that's what he was. Um, you can do this with anybody. You can do it with Tom Jones. You can do it with Al Jolson. You can do it with Frank Sinatra, Tony. You could do it with anybody. doesn't matter who it is. You can, if you can elicit their strategy, how they, how they do things, Yeah. I can do it quite naturally, but you can actually learn this stuff. Um, you can replicate it. Now, that doesn't mean to say you become them, but what you do, you can capture the spirit 
of what they were trying to achieve or what they actually did achieve. And you can replicate that. So I don't look like Frank Sinatra. Don't need to. Mm -hmm. Don't need to. What I need to do is I need to sing the song honestly. I need to tell the story of the song. I need, and I obviously, I wear a nice tuxedo dinner suit. Um, I'm clean shaven. I'm sober. I'm concentrated. I'm focused. I'm on the money. Boom. And then the, the music's there, and then the vocal is on top. And I believe it. My heart's in it 110%. Why would the audience not believe it? Mm -hmm. They don't believe I'm Frank. I don't sound like Frank Sinatra. I, as far as I, I sound like me, right? The audience say that sounds like Frank Sinatra. That's great. If somebody tells me I sound like Donald Duck, that's great. I don't get involved in that. What I get involved in is doing it. Absolutely doing it live with a big orchestra or a four-piece band or a backing track or a piano. Doesn't make any difference. And then there's the music side as well, Frank, because I mean the 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 swing music, the swing and jazz, and uh, the the style of Sinatra, the big band uh, sound. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's had its resurgence over the over the last few years. You know, mm -hmm. Robbie Williams uh, did his uh, his swing thing, and then yeah. Michael Bublé has made it made it fresh for for yes. a younger audience yeah. as well. And uh, but that that big band sound uh, is, I mean, it's absolutely timeless, isn't it? Well, here's a thing that people have never thought about, but when I, when I tell you the answer to this, or I'll make this comment to you, um, people will think, I already know that, because their intuition will know that this is the correct answer. Really all we're doing when we're playing music, and I, I, I know how to do this, this is, why, this is why I do it, all we're doing is changing people's brain chemistry. I purposely change people's brain chemistry, because I know how to do that. And I do it with music. That's why they use music for therapy with people with mental health problems mm -hmm. or people who are maybe disabled or people who have got, you know, psychological problems or, you know, they're horrendously disabled in some fashion. Um, music is a very, very powerful and a very evocative uh, <coughs> uh, therapy. And if you, can, if you can find and elicit how that works, you know, it, it's, it's, it's so per I can't not tell you how powerful it is. Mm -hmm. So because I know this, I can elicit that I can use it. I've showed other people how to use it and they don't use it because they're not prepared to go that distance. You have to, you have to be prepared, if you will, to go a certain distance. Mm -hmm. Most people are not prepared to go that distance. They're quite happy to sit back and leave it. But if you're prepared to go the distance and you get involved in this uh, music uh, stuff and you, and you understand uh, exactly what I'm saying, You'll understand that and somewhere in your heart you know what I'm saying is absolutely true because you, you understand it. You have to get involved um, and you alter people's brain chemistry. That's why people sit and listen to a song and they laugh or they sit and they cry. You've altered the brain chemistry because you've made them think about something that they thought about before mm -hmm. and it brings back a memory. Now, if, there's a, if, if people want to listen to this, you know, I do that purposefully. That's why they buy it because I'm honest. That's exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Try and listen, anybody listen just now, try and listen to the song New York, New York and go into a bad mood. Try it. <laughs> now, talking about the music, <laughs> uh, because I, I, I recently found out as well that uh, Frank Sinatra was involved in a lot of the arranging of the songs. Mm -hmm. uh, so he could hear what the, he wanted the music to sound like and, and, and none more in, as well as in this next uh, song that we're going to play because it's a, a Stevie Wonder song that was changed into a big band sound and it's just it's if you listen to this this is, this is just Sinatra all the way at the bank really it's just it's just uh, the actual the actual arrangement is I mean Sinatra had many many people writing for him and arranging for him uh, over his years uh, the Billy May there's, there's so many people right yeah but he had a certain thing he wanted and he gave them a brief and they went with a paper, paper and pencil, and they played it in the, in the in the studio. Yeah, that's it. Bring the flutes up, take the trombone down, da -da. and this is the this is the cumulation of that whole thing coming together. And people will think, oh, I've never heard that like that before. Yeah. But when you hear it, you'll think it's a Frank Sinatra song. It isn't. It's a Stevie Wonder song. But he's performing it in his style. This is for once in my life. Here's a second special request of the evening. Once in my life, I have someone who needs me Someone I've needed so long For once unafraid, I can go where life leads me And somehow I know I'll be strong For 
once I can touch what my heart used to dream of long before I knew someone warm just like you would make my dreams come true for once in my life I won't let sorrow hurt me not like it's hurt me before for once I have something I know won't desert me and I'm not alone anymore for once I can say this is mine you won't take it long as I know I got love I can make it for once in my life I got someone who needs me Take it up town go can say this is mine you won't take it long as I know I got love I can make it for once in my life I found someone yeah for once in my life I found someone once in my life I got someone who needs Thank you. Going to be a bite with Frank. Oh. Thank you for everything you've done for us this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here's our final song by Fred Ebb and John Kander about the ball team that lost and that city that never sleeps. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today I want to be a part of it New York, New York These vagabond shoes Are longing to stray Right through the very heart of it New York, New York I want to wake up in a city that doesn't sleep And find I'm king of the hill I'm top of the heap These little town blues Are melting Start of it in old New York. If I can make it there, I'll make it anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New And 
And you better believe it, baby If I can't make it there I'm gonna make it, sweetheart Anywhere It's up to you No And God bless. I'll tell you what, it doesn't get any better than that for a song. There you go. New York, New York. <laughs> uh, Frank Holden. A uh, final little segment uh, here talking about uh, your show. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a big show, Frank. And it's been very good to you as well in the music yes. business because you've you've travelled around, you've, yep. you've you've been to uh, invited to various different places across the world. So absolutely, yeah, uh, you've probably enjoyed yourself quite a, quite a bit. I would imagine. Absolutely, but uh, a lot of them you can't mention because a lot of them are private. <laughs> Which is which is true, you know. You you, you go play, you, you know, the UK is fine, but if you go anywhere else, then um, you go there as to to do something privately for somebody, and, and that's how it works. But the thing is, if you do your homework, you do your research, and you put this put this whole stuff together the right way, um, you can have a nice uh, life. You can earn some money, uh, you can have some fun, and you can enjoy yourself, and you can be singing songs and doing something that you love. You have if you, anybody listening to this, if you don't have the passion, leave it. Uh -huh. that, 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 there you go. That there's a that cost you ten thousand dollars in therapy. Don't have the passion, leave it. You have to have a passion. <laughs> and if you can't get the passion, you're wasting your time. Now, my golden question that I usually ask all my guests uh, yeah. from the, the musical industry is: What advice would you give anybody who wants to get involved in this uh, this wonderful game we call show business? Do it, but they have to do it with passion. They have to have belief. They have to have belief in themselves, and that doesn't mean to say that they're a good singer or a bad singer because, you know. Singers, singing is in the ear of the beholder. So you'll have somebody saying, oh, that guy's really, really, really good. And somebody saying, I don't like that guy. It's always in the ear of the beholder. Mm -hmm. One thing I would say is, um, go to your studio, record a couple of songs, two songs, five songs, whatever. It'll probably cost you £25 an hour. Do it. Spend the money. Borrow the money off your granny. Go and do it. And get your five songs. And listen to the five songs. Don't have them doctored. Don't have them edited. Uh, don't have them chop to sound as if they're perfect just go and record them and then sit down and listen to your recordings and then make a decision is the recording what you hear physically the recording you hear in your mind are you singing flat are you singing sharp are you off the key and you have to be really honest with yourself you can correct these things but you have to be really 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 honest um, and then go from there and don't believe what your mother tells you and the guys in the pub tell you <laughs> and, and, and all your friends tell you that you're wonderful when they've, when they've had a lot of drink and a lot of food. No, no, no. You have to do this privately for yourself in a booth, in a studio, and you have to listen. And you can have one, maybe one or two confidants who can say to you, do you know, that's really flat as a pancake or there's no energy in it. Or you have to just listen. Mm -hmm. But the big decision is you have to make. And you have to say to yourself, actually, I'm flat as a pancake. And you can correct if you, if you can learn to correct it if you know. But a lot of people sing like that they don't understand because people have told them they're great and they're not that great. You have, you have to listen. You have to pay attention. Honesty and passion has been the theme that you've been talking about today. Absolutely. Uh, Nothing else. And, uh, and, and and I really like that and, and I like hearing that from, from an artist as well yeah. uh, about being honest with yourself and, uh, and, put, to be. and putting that into your performance. <clears throat> now, if people want to uh, book you, Frank, what's the easiest way to, to find Frank Holden? Don't. <laughs> That's a joke. No, they can. All they have to do is punch in Google. Uh, rather than give you a big website thing, just simply punch in Google uh, Frank Holden Sinatra singer or Frank Holden singer. It'll come up. Uh, I'm glad to see everywhere. <laughs> It'll come up I, everywhere. I'm the same, but most of mine is on Crime Watch, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and, that, and and if anybody wants to, on the website, they'll find a, an email. It's a click through. I uh, always do this if I get the opportunity. They get a question, send me an email. Mm -hmm. Ask me a blunt question, I give you a straight answer. There you go. Uh, and, and and the answer I give you will work for you. But just, you know, I kind of don't pussyfoot about the bush if you want to straight. Dum! I kind of noticed that. Uh, and that's how it works. And if you can get that, then you're on a winner. Frank, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, today. The, the, the music's fantastic, the, the vocals are fantastic, and, and some great honest chat yep. uh, about the business. We're going to play out one final song, uh, which is 
as you said earlier uh, to me off air, uh, the most requested funeral song. This is the most requested song on the planet Earth. So there's a business for somebody. Sing at funerals and <laughs> sing uh, my way. And uh, I got to get the hell out of here. I got a goddamn plane to catch. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. <clears throat> So I face the final curtain My friend, I'll say it clear I'll state my case Of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I've traveled each and every highway and more, much more than this I did it my way Regrets, I've had a few But then again, too few to mention I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption. I've planned each charted course, each careful step along the byways, and more, much more than this. I did it. There were times I'm sure you knew When I bit off more than I could chew But through it all, when there was doubt I ate it up, then spat it out I faced it all share of losing and now as the tears subside I find it all so amusing to think I did all that and may I say not in a shy way Thank you. We'll see you in the second half. <laughs>